True. Nervous. Yeah, I've been really, really nervous. But is that any reason to say that I'm nuts? If anything, the situation made my senses sharper, not duller. Especially my hearing. It was super acute. Let me tell you, I heard everything in heaven, everything on earth, and I even heard some stuff from hell. Huh. So how could I be crazy? Well, listen up and see just how clearly I can tell you the whole story. I can't say exactly when the idea first popped into my head, but once it did, it wouldn't leave me alone, day or night. There wasn't a real reason, no passion involved. I actually kind of liked the old man. He never done me wrong, he never insulted me, I didn't want his gold. I think it was his eye. Yeah, that's it. One of his eyes looked like a vulture's, a pale blue eye with a film over it. It was kind of gross. Every time it looked at me, my blood ran cold. So, little by little, I made up my mind to get rid of the old man. Uh, and that eye, forever. I can tell by your expression you still think I'm crazy. But crazy people don't know what they're doing. You should have seen me. You should have seen how smart I went about it. With caution, with foresight, and deceit. I was never kinder to the old man than the week before I killed him. And every night, around midnight, I'd slowly open his door. Oh, so gently. And when I had an opening just big enough for my head, I put in a dark lantern, closed up so no light would shine, and then I thrust in my head. It would have made you laugh to see how cunningly I did it. I moved it slowly, very, very slowly, so I wouldn't disturb the old man's sleep. It took me an hour to get my head in far enough to see him lying in his bed. Do you think that a madman would have been so careful? Next, when my head was in the room, I undid the lantern cautiously. Oh, so cautiously, so that a single thin ray fell upon the vulture eye. I did this for seven long nights, every night around midnight, but I found the eye always closed, so it was impossible for me to do the work. It wasn't the old man who bothered me, it was his evil eye. And every morning when the sun rose, I walked into his chamber. I spoke to him cheerfully. I called him by his name, asked him how he slept. He would have had to be a genius to know that I was watching him while he slept. On the eighth night, I was more careful than ever when I opened the door. A watch's minute hand moves faster than mine did. Never before had I felt so powerful, so smart. I could barely contain my excitement. There I was, opening the door little by little and he had no clue what I was up to. I chuckled at the idea. Maybe he heard me because he moved subtly in bed as if he was startled. Now you might think that I went away, but not your grunkle. His room was pitch black, shutters closed, tight from fear of robbers. So I knew he couldn't see the door opening. I kept pushing it open slowly and steadily. I was about to open the lantern when my thumb slipped on the latch and the old man sat up in bed crying out, ah, who's there? I stayed still and didn't make a sound. For an entire hour, I didn't move a muscle. And somehow he didn't lie down. He was still sitting up, listening, kind of like how I did, staring at him and that awful, terrible eye. And then I heard a slight groan of mortal terror, not of pain or of grief. It was a sound that I knew very well. Every night at around midnight, it echoed from my own chest deepening the horrors that distracted me. I almost pitied him, though I chuckled inside. He had been lying awake ever since the first noise, trying to convince himself it was nothing. It's just the wind in the chimney, he'd say. Or, it's only a mouse crossing the floor. Or even, must be the neighbors having a hoot nanny. He was trying to comfort himself, but it wasn't working. It was all in vain because death was approaching him, casting its shadow before it enveloped its victim. When I had waited a long time, patiently, without hearing him lie down, I decided to open a little crevice in the lantern. So, I opened it. Very stealthily, until a single dim ray, like a spider's thread, shot out and fell upon the vulture eye. The eye was open, wide, wide open, and I grew furious as I gazed upon it. I saw it clearly, a dull blue with a hideous veil over it that chilled me to the bone. But I saw nothing else of the old man's face or body. I aimed the ray of light precisely on the darn spot. And then my sharpened senses took over. My ears heard a low, dull, quick sound, like a watch enveloped in cotton. I knew that wretched sound too well. It was the beating of the old man's heart. It increased my fury, 
as the beating of a drum stimulates a soldier. But I kept still. I barely breathed. I held the lantern motionless. I tried to see how stealthily I could maintain the ray upon his eye. And all the while, the awful noise of the heart increased. It grew quicker and louder every moment. The old man's terror must have been extreme. It grew louder, louder. And now at the dead hour of night, amid the dreadful silence of that old house, the strange noise excited me to uncontrollable terror. But for a few minutes longer, I refrained and stood still. But then the beating grew louder. I thought the heart must burst. And then a new anxiety came over me. Our neighbor was going to hear the sound of his heart. The old man's time had come. With a loud yell, I threw open the lantern and leaped into the room. He shrieked once. Once only. In an instant, it was over. I pulled the heavy bed over him. I smiled cheerily. The deed was done. But for more minutes than I would have expected, the heart kept beating with a muffled sound. It didn't bug me since nobody could hear it through the wall, so I waited. And finally, it stopped. The old man was finally dead. I moved the bed and examined the body. Yep, he was stone dead. I wrapped my hand around the heart and held it there for a few minutes. No pulsing. He was stone dead. His eye would never bug me ever again. If you still think I'm crazy, you'll change your mind when I tell you what I did next. The night was almost over, so I worked as fast as I could, but also as quiet as I could. I can't go into the details, but I put all the body parts under the planks of the floor. Then, I carefully hammered the boards back in place. There was not a chance that any human eye could detect anything wrong. There was no stain, no blood, no sign of a struggle. When I finally finished, it was 4 o'clock, still dark. And just as I was about to go to bed, there was a knock on the door. I whistled and I went to open it. There stood two men who introduced themselves as officers. Apparently a shriek had been heard by a neighbor during the night. They suspected foul play, a phone call was made, and they were sent to search the premises. I smiled at the officers. I didn't have anything to fear. Come on in, gentlemen, come on in. The shriek that the neighbor heard was my own. I had a dream. I told the officers that the old man was visiting a local dump. And then I took them all over the house. I had them search the bathroom, had them search the kitchen, and then I finally led them to his bedroom. I showed them his safe, secure and undisturbed. And in my enthusiasm, I even brought chairs into the room, and I invited them to sit down and rest, as I placed my own chair upon the spot where the victim's corpse sat. The officers didn't suspect a thing. We sat in a triangle, talking about the weather. But soon, I grew pale. I wanted them to get out of there. There was a very unpleasant ringing in my ears, but still, they just sat there and talked. The ringing grew louder and grew louder and louder until finally I realized something. The noise wasn't coming from my ears. My body suddenly became very sweaty. Was it hot in here? At this point, I was as pale as a ghost. The sound got louder and louder, but I couldn't do anything about it. I talked even more quickly, but the noise steadily increased. I stood up and tried to distract them, speaking in a high voice and using wild gestures, but the noise increased even further. Why wouldn't these cops leave? I paced the floor back and forth, as if excited to fury by their observations, but the noise steadily increased. Hot Belgian waffles! What can I do? I foamed, I raved, I swore! I swung the chair upon which I'd been sitting. I grated it upon the boards, but the noise arose overall and continually increased. It grew louder. Louder! Louder! And still the officers chatted pleasantly and smiled. Was it possible they didn't hear it? No, there was no way. They had to hear it. They suspected. They knew. They were making a mockery of my horror. Anything is better than this agony. Anything is more tolerable than this feeling. Those hypocritical smiles cut into my soul. I felt like I had to scream or I would die. And now, again, louder, louder. Louder! Villains! Dissemble no more! I admit the deed! Tear up the planks! Here! Here! It's the beating of this hideous heart! 